We have no idea what is really making it to our faucets. Of course, we don't drink it. It's dark and just rusty looking. Nobody ever said, oh, you've got a problem? They just kept saying, no, you don't. You don't have a problem. It started with a cold slurry spill. October 11th of 2000, 307 million gallons of arsenic sludge and heavy metals was dumped into our water supply. It came through here and entered the river right here. And then on top of that, the system was built to serve 600 homes. It's currently serving roughly 3,500, and it's outdated and dilapidated, so that compiles even more problems. This is uh, my water in the Tomahawk area in Martin County, Kentucky. Um, this is the water that I bathe in and I'm pregnant. This is the water that's coming out of my tap. Four horse water coming out of my faucet. Of course, we don't drink it, and we try our best not to use it to wash dishes or to bathe for the surrounding areas, like the outskirts of the county. It's dark and just rusty looking, or that like milky color to it. Nobody ever said, oh, you've got a problem. They just kept saying, no, you don't. You don't have a problem. I have four-wheel drive and a tow package, so I can get us anywhere. This is why. Yeah, this is why. <laughs> this is the reservoir. This is where they pump the water from the river and hold it. And then they pump it to the treatment plant around the curve, and that's where it's treated and put into our lungs. But you see the stuff that's thrown into our water? Stuff that's left here. This is our drinking water. Water flows in this direction. You had the slurry spill, then our sewage treatment plant, then you go to the intake where they suck the water from the river, then it is pumped over a hill into a reservoir, a man-made lake, and then from there it goes into our treatment system where it's then treated with chemicals and pumped into the lines, which are also crumbling and deteriorating. So the water at the plant may be good, but through the cracks and groundwater infiltrating into our lines, by the time it makes it to most homes, it's not what it was at the intake. We have no idea what is really making it to our faucets. This is the 29 bull water advisories from 2017. They last for about two weeks. So as soon as one expired, another was. This area, all of Appalachia, has a higher cancer death rate than the rest of the United States. Even if you factor out the fact that we have high poverty, we have smoking, we have less access to health care, even factoring in those things, our cancer death rate is just too high to not be environmental. Last January, we had a, a major crisis. We were without water for eight days. For well over a week, customers of the Martin County Water District have been experiencing disruptions in their water service. And then it was rationed for another six days. So we had water from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. After that, it came out about two or three days later that they needed a 49% rate increase. Whether it's just like they're not getting clean water or they're having to spend so much money on buying bottled water, everyone's facing the crisis differently, but it's still a crisis.
we're not bad people, we're not ignorant people. We just are stuck in a vicious cycle. We can turn this thing around, but not without help. These are private, for-profit companies. As we looked at what they'd done in other places, they had come in, taken over the water system. Water was not improved, system was not improved, but rates were raised. The public needs to have charge of this type of system. This does not need to be a private corporation that is just trying to increase profits on Wall Street. There really has to be kind of an understanding between the citizens and government officials that we are reaching a point where something has to be done and we have to work together to make that happen. There's live wires. You can see the tape. I'm not sure why there's ropes everywhere, but it's holding something together. You can see where they put the cap over this one for me. <laughs> they hate when I get pictures. The social media has had a huge part in organizing this community and allowing this community to organize itself. And one of the things that gets shared a lot on social media are the videos of usually brown water coming out of taps. And this is our water treatment plant. That one is down and has been for almost, almost a year. So these two are the only ones working. So then, as people started to show on Facebook that this is what my water looks like today, that got the word out. I asked one of the magistrates at one of our first meetings together, I said, well, did you learn anything? And he said, yeah, you're a lovable hang in the ass. A lot of politicians have now noticed what's going on here, and I think that will really help because they don't want to look bad. We're kind of forcing them to acknowledge us. Most of the country legally does not recognize what I believe is a fundamental human right to clean water. There is a UN resolution that states that there is a basic human right to clean water for drinking and sanitation. That was not adopted by the United States. As you talk to more and more people, you see that this is a nationwide problem. Flint was sort of a watershed moment for awareness in this country about the problems with drinking water. and. As a result of Flint, there's a lot more scrutiny on water systems, or well, there's just a lot more public awareness and recognition of how important the issue is. If your roof is falling in and you patch half of it, your roof's still falling in. So unless we keep fighting and pushing until it's completely done, it, we'll never see better. You'll see why I wanted to bring you here when you get up here. My house is just on the other side of this hill right here. Look at the sky, it's beautiful. People think I'm the pessimist because I'm always the one out fighting, but I'm actually the one out fighting because I'm the optimist. I actually believe if you fight, you might win. We live in a really tight-knit community where everybody is more like family than neighbors. Everybody looks out for everybody, and if one's in need, we all rally together to make sure that they're okay. <laughs>